Hey guys, Marco here from Aviero Live CS. Welcome back to the channel. Today we will continue reviewing the Boeing 737-800NG flight instruments and displays. And we will keep talking about controls and indicators. Let's get started. In the forward overhead panel, we have the Displays Source Control Panel. Both a Display Source Display Electronics Unit DEU selector and an EFIS control switch are located above the captain on the forward overhead panel. You can see them right here. So let's see what we can do with both of them. We'll start with the display source selector, which is at this one here. Both DEUs or only one DEU can drive all six captain and first officer displays. There is a source selector on the overhead panel. The selector is normally set to the auto mode, which is the position we have right now. If we go to all on one, select the captain's DU to drive all six captain and first officer displays. In the auto position, allows DU one to drive the captain outboard, captain inboard and upper display units, while DU two drives the first officer outboard first officer inboard and lower display units. Provides automatic switching from both DUs to one in case of single DU failure. All on two selects the first officer's DU to drive all six captain and first officer displays. Note these source selectors and switches are normally used while the aircraft is on the ground for maintenance purposes. So if we select all on one, we will see display source indication on both captains and first officers PFD. And then we have the displays control panel switch for the EFIS. Both on one, both pilots displays are set to the captain's EFIS control panel. Normal, the left EFIS control panel controls the captain's display and the right EFIS control panel controls the first officer's display. Both on two, both pilot displays are set to the first officer's EFIS control panel. Now let's talk about the display select panels. One in the left forward panel and the other one is in the right forward panel. And number one is the main panel display units selector. Selects what is displayed on the respective outboard and inboard display units. Outboard primary flight display, outboard PFD, displays the PFD on the outboard display unit and blanks the inboard display unit. So let's select outboard PFD and you can see that's exactly what happens. Normal displays PFD on the outboard display unit and navigation display on the inboard display unit. Now, if we go to the inboard engine primary, which is the first one here, displays the primary engine instruments on the inboard display unit and the PFD on the outboard display unit. As you can see, if we select inboard PFD, this plays the PFD on the inboard display unit and blanks the outboard display unit. The inboard malfunction display, this one here, this plays PFD on the outboard display unit and blanks the inboard display unit. The inboard display unit stays blank until system format or secondary engine format is selected with MFD switches on the engine display control panel. So if we select engines, we can see the engines here. If we select systems, we will see the systems. Now let's see what we have for the lower display unit selector. Select what is displayed on the lower display unit. If we go to engine primary to the left, this plays the primary engine instruments on the lower display unit and blanks the upper display unit. If we go back to normal, display unit is normally blank or displays MFD format selected on the engine display control panel. Now, if we go to navigation display, displays the navigation display on the lower unit. I just wanted to mention that if your airplane is equipped with the video surveillance system, 
that video will be displayed on the lower display unit. On the center forward panel, we have the speed reference selector. So we have an outer knob here, and we have an inner knob here, which is a big one. Uh, the outer one sets the reference airspeed box on the airspeed indication. In the outer position, the reference airspeeds and gross weight are provided automatically through the FMC. V1 used to manually set the station speed on the ground, in flight displays invalid entry. Same thing is for uh, VR. If we go VR, used to manually select rotation speed on the ground, in flight displays invalid entry. Now, weight allows manual entry of reference gross weight. VREF used to manually set the landing reference speed in flight on the ground displays invalid entry. Box 5 used to manually set the white box 5 to the desired value and set removes the speed reference display. Now let's go back to our auto here and then the inner knob if we rotate this one, manually sets the appropriate reference airspeed or gross weight, the digital display appears below the airspeed indication. On the left forward panel, we have the display brightness controls for the captain, and on the right one, we have it for the first officer. You can see them here and here, and let's talk about the outboard display unit brightness control which we can rotate, and it adjusts the brightness of the captain outboard display unit. So if we want to decrease the brightness, we just go left, as you can see, and then we'll go right to increase it. Number two is the inboard display unit brightness control outer. If we rotate it, adjust the brightness of the captain inboard display unit. Same thing, if we turn left, we'll decrease the brightness, if we go right, it will increase. Now, the inboard display unit radar brightness inboard control, which is the inner one, if we rotate that one, adjust weather radar and terrain display brightness on the captain inboard display, which is this one here. Now we cannot see it because we don't have any radar returns or terrain. Number four is the upper display unit brightness. If we rotate it, will adjust the brightness of the upper display unit. Number five is the lower display unit brightness. Uh, the outer one adjusts the brightness of the lower display unit. And the inner one will adjust weather radar and terrain display brightness on the lower display unit. Okay, guys, that's the end of the video for today. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed to the channel yet, please do it now. And don't forget to hit that bell so you will be notified once we upload a new video. If you think these videos could be useful for somebody else, please share them. And that's going to help me a lot to grow the channel. Next week, we will continue talking about flight instruments and displays. So until then, guys, please take care and hope to see you soon.